I got a feeling this is going to make a pretty big mess. <laughs> right in my face. I'm an idiot. What's up everybody? Thank you for watching the video today. Boy, I tell you what, it feels good to finally be back out here making a video. I have been sick several times in my life and I've never had anything come close to whatever that was that I just went through for the last couple weeks. So thank you all for hanging in there with me. Hopefully you noticed that we hadn't uploaded in a while. It's actually the last video that I uploaded, I filmed and started to edit a couple weeks ago before I got sick. So luckily I had one kind of in the vault that I was able to upload, but I was too sick to even edit that video. I could not get out of bed. So thank God we finally got through that. But today we're actually gonna do something a little bit different than what we normally do on here. While I was sick, there was a couple days there where I did feel good enough to get up and get out and I went to my local sporting goods store, I guess you would call it, and I came across this. This is a 40 caliber blowgun. It's called the Bunker Buster, and it's made by Terminator. It was only like 25 bucks, so um, I'm sure like anything else, there's a spectrum on the quality of these things, and I don't know how good this one actually is, but it was pretty cheap, and I've always kind of thought of these as being like a movie weapon that you see you know, ninjas trank dart bad guys in the neck and take them out silently and stuff like that. But I've never actually thought of these as being an effective weapon. But while I was in the store, I was reading the package and I did a little research and apparently uh, these things can be surprisingly effective. So a YouTuber that I'm subscribed to actually uploaded a video a couple months ago and he was holding up like a bunch of small game that they had hunted and killed with a blowgun. And that really surprised me. So I decided to pick this thing up and give it a shot today. So I haven't opened it or used it yet, obviously. We're gonna do that right now. Looks like they got a little sling in there. I guess that would come in handy if you were gonna strap it to your back and walk through the woods. And here is the actual blowgun itself. It looks like it's got little dart holders going all the way down the barrel. I assume to store the darts when you put them together. It even has a little front sight <laughs> right there on the muzzle, which is pretty funny. And then it's got a big uh, rubber mouthpiece right there. So this one is 36 inches long. It is the longest one they had in the store. And I was reading the package and apparently like most guns, the longer the barrel, the more velocity and power uh, you get out of these. So this is the longest one they had. And on the paper, I was also uh, reading this through the package. It kind of gives approximate shooting ranges and uh, feet per second that these things can get. And the 36 inch version that we have apparently can get up to 200 feet per second and a range of 90 to 110 feet. That sounds ambitious. I'll be surprised if we actually get numbers like that, but I guess we'll find out. And then it also came with this big variety pack of different darts. And we'll obviously take these out and look at them, but some of these look super nasty so obviously it's not a real gun i'm not expecting to get insane deadly results out of it or nothing but i am kind of curious to see uh, what these blowguns are actually capable of so it's a 40 caliber blowgun but obviously the darts themselves are not 40 caliber they have these plastic pieces that you attach to the back of the dart and that is what gives you the seal and the barrel it also kind of lets you color code different darts so you can pick them out easier i guess but i'm really hoping that you guys will be able to see these on camera because some of these are wicked. So this is just a regular spike. You can see it uh, sticking out by the top of my hand there. Super sharp and really nasty, but just a regular spike. And then this is kind of like a broadhead looking dart. Hopefully you can see that. But the spike on the end of that one is much fatter and just kind of has like a broadhead shape to it. So we're gonna shoot each of these. First, we're gonna start with just a paper target on my cardboard box there, pretty much a point blank range, and see what we get. <laughs> All right, that one stuck into our cardboard, no problem. Let's try the broadhead. Wow, the broadhead definitely sounded like it whacked that cardboard a little bit harder. I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. So, the first one, that we shot there. The white one is just a regular uh, spike dart. And then the green one is our broadhead. And this is a really thick uh, cardboard too. It's not just a regular cardboard box. You can see it's one of the ones that kind of fold over and attach to the other side. And then hopefully it'll expose properly, but you can see how far they came through on the backside of our cardboard. So not too shabby. So we got a couple that they call stun darts that I don't think will do too much damage, so we're probably not gonna shoot them, but you can see them here. One of them is just a plastic piece. 
Um, there's actually nowhere to put any metal dart or anything in that one. It's just a plastic, I assume, to practice with or you know play with, maybe shoot each other with. Um, and then we have another stun dart that is metal. This is called a super stun dart, and it's just like a little metal stud that you can put in one of the plastic pieces. So this one would probably suck to get shot with, but it's not really gonna like penetrate anything or do any serious damage. But the main one that I wanna shoot, and the one I think is probably the most deadly, is this one here. Now that is a thick and heavy and sharp spike coming out of that little plastic piece. So I think this one is probably uh, the most dangerous one out of the bunch. So let's give it a shot on our cardboard. Dang, <laughs> that thing swapped that cardboard hard. Kind of went in at a bit of an angle though. I don't know if that one was flying true like the others did. They went in perfectly straight. This one kind of went in just a little bit to the side, but just how hard that one hit, it definitely sounds like the probably the most powerful out of the bunch. It's just a matter of getting enough air into the gun to shoot it out of there fast enough to be effective. Let's try a grapefruit. Straight through all the way to the plastic piece. That was our uh, regular spike. Let's try the broadhead. Wow, I saw juice fly out of the sides <laughs> on that one. All right, let's try our deadly little spike bullet. Definitely hits it the hardest and it's whacking it and it's like I saw a big mist spray out, but I might try a different one because it's going in at an angle and I don't like that. Maybe that one might be messed up. Attempt number two. Oh yeah, much better. Here is our first big spike, and you can see how it's going in at an angle, and I didn't like that um, with the paper target either, so I changed it up, and this is the second big spike that we shot, and that one went in so far that even the plastic piece went all the way in to our grapefruit, so that's pretty cool. But I gotta say, I kinda like these longer spikes because even though they're not as heavy and they don't hit as hard as the yellow one, um, they're so long that if you were shooting like a small rodent or something like that, you could just skewer it to like a, a wall or a tree. <laughs> All right, let's make a little mess. I'm gonna try a full 12 ounce soda. I'm just going straight for the big boy on this one. So hopefully it doesn't splash back at us or on my cameras. Oh, <laughs> well, it definitely went through. All right, so it fell off our pallet and then went down right into here. So there's a hole right there, and then there's another small hole right there. I wonder if maybe I hit it kind of off to the side, and then it went through and hit the pop can right there. Yeah, I think I still hear it in the pop can, so. <laughs> I'm gonna sit y'all right there. All right, so I got the spike, but I do not see our yellow plastic piece, so I'm gonna have to try and find that now. So I just found it all the way over here on the other side of my truck. So I was kind of thinking that with the way that this, the big spike uh, came out of this plastic piece, if you could get, you know, enough air behind this thing, even though the plastic piece is on there, it would just shed this and then allow the dart to go further into uh, whatever you're shooting and get quite a bit of penetration. So I just got an idea. Hold on a second. Bam, I'm a gosh dang genius, y'all. So this is an air compressor, obviously, and it's got these attachments. We have a couple of them that look like they fit perfectly into the mouthpiece of our blow gun. Oh yeah, and it's gonna give it way more power uh, than I was able to blow into it. So I'm actually gonna step back a little bit. I'm gonna move you guys over here. There's a big glare on the lens. So I'm gonna try to fix that. And I'm gonna put my glasses on for this, but I can kind of crouch behind the truck right here, just in case anything bounced back. Uh, I don't wanna get hit in the face. And it also will allow me to kind of rest our blow gun and get a perfect shot. So we're gonna try the grapefruit and I'm gonna start with our little broadhead here. Our broadhead went all the way in. Now for the bigger dart. Wow. I just saw a big mist fly off the side of that grapefruit. It literally sent our plastic piece almost all the way in to where you can't even see it. Let's try another soda can. 
kind of hit it on the side. So this one actually went in one side and out the other and the dart was not inside the pop can like it was when I blew into it. So hopefully the slow-mo camera uh, is picking some of this up. But it's weird because it's really subtle. Like I'm just squeezing the air compressor attachment and it's launching that thing out of there a lot harder than when I'm just blowing it but it doesn't feel super powerful or nothing. But when you look at the targets we're shooting, it's definitely uh, hitting these things quite a bit harder. <laughs> so I shot two with the air compressor resting on my truck right here at our grapefruit and miss. They went just slightly over uh, the top of the grapefruit. And look at where I just found these out here in the yard. So I'm walking all the way out here to this tree. And again, you can see how far away we are from my truck where I shot these and look at where they ended up. Stuck into the tree firmly. Like this, this broadhead right here, I mean, that is not coming out of there unless I pull on it. That one was in some stuff growing up the side of the tree here. And this green one is stuck right in the side of that tree bark. That is amazing. <laughs> Not only that they stuck into that tree from all the way back here, but they were like two or three inches apart. So they obviously fly pretty straight and pretty accurate. So I actually just tried to chronograph a couple of these and it wasn't picking them up. It was giving me an error. So that kind of sucks. I wanted to see what the velocity difference was, but I have my shooting rest here and I want to try some stuff at point blank range and see if we can get some cool like slow-mo shots. So first up, we got our grapefruit and I'm definitely wearing my glasses for this. <laughs> All right, we'll hit this one with the broadhead first, see what that looks like. I got the different uh, air compressor attachment on this time too, so maybe this one will be a little more powerful. I think that's a little more power. Holy crap. So I hope you guys can see that, but that whole entire dart <laughs> went all the way through the grapefruit. It looks like the plastic piece might be stuck in there, but that's definitely a first. Let's try a couple sporting clays, and we're going straight for the big one. Turn my head. Our plastic piece was kind of sticking out of it like that. But if you look at the sporting clays, there's our big entrance hole, exit hole, and entrance and exit. So that dart went straight through both of these clays and it looks like it went into our grapefruit. All right, this time I moved the grapefruit so we can see maybe our exit on the slow-mo. I just heard it whack that tree about 15, 20 yards away, hard and fast, like it was not slowing down. Once again, there is the entrance hole, exit hole, entrance hole, exit hole. That's amazing. <laughs> Hopefully you could see the apple juice fly out on the slow-mo camera. And then there is our perfect little exit hole where that dart came out the other side. Now we're gonna step it up. This is a squash, quite a bit bigger than an apple or a grapefruit. Harder too. There's our red plastic piece from the broadhead that I shot. And I have a feeling there will be no dart attached to this. Yep. So it's just our plastic piece. And I can see on this side right here, a clean exit hole where that dart also came out the other side. So. That is actually pretty impressive. Let's try a 12 ouncer. I got a feeling this is gonna make a pretty big mess. <laughs> right in my face. <laughs> that was stupid. It's on my camera. It's on all my cameras. Ah, I'm an idiot. And last but not least, we got my 10% ballistics gel block. Obviously there's a lot of bullets in there from uh, previous videos, but I have the muzzle of our blow gun pointed right at the very bottom where it is clear. So this is probably the most legitimate test. I'm gonna start with the big spike on this one because it's got the most weight to it. I don't think the broadhead or the other one will do uh, too much damage in there, so. <laughs> well, dang, that doesn't really tell us much because it stopped right at the plastic part, you can see it in there. Now I don't know if, you know, that wasn't on there, if it would have went further. It's kind of hard to tell because obviously we can't shoot the blow gun without the plastic piece on the back of it. I was hoping it would kind of kick it into the gel block like it did with our fruit and give us a little more penetration. All right, let's try 
Just a regular long spike. See what it does. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought was gonna happen. Just barely penetrated enough to even come out of the muzzle. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But you can see in the gel block. I mean, it gave us a couple inches. That thing's so long uh, that it still went in a couple inches, but literally, as soon as that plastic piece exited the muzzle, our long spike stopped in the ballistics gel block. Well, on that note, guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up right here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you had a little bit of fun out here with me today. Blow guns are an absolute blast, especially when you put um, air compressor attachments into the mouthpiece and launch some things out of there about 10 times faster. That uh, was a lot of fun. Hopefully some of the slow-mo turned out cool. That's kind of what the video turned into, was just me shooting fruit and stuff with blow gun darts and uh, trying to capture some cool slow motion. So I hope some of that is cool, and I hope that you guys enjoy watching it. I did not expect this thing to be as fun as it was. Um, and it was definitely a good time today. So let me know in the comments what your guys' experiences are with these. I'm sure some of you have played around with them. There's actually some pretty cool stuff out there you can get, like I saw paint balls you can get and you could like, you know, have paintball wars with your buddies and stuff like that. That looks like a lot of fun. And I'm sure there's some more powerful stuff out there as well. As far as being an actual effective weapon, maybe for like small rodents or really small game, I think it would probably be effective, especially if you get the right blow gun and blow gun dart combination. I absolutely believe that there's you know some stuff out there that could be super effective this one i don't think so i could just keep thinking about people getting hit in the neck and stuff like that i think it would get enough penetration to do some damage if you were to shoot someone in the neck with like a tranquilizer dart or something like that which obviously none of us would ever do that but i think it would work for that but as far as actual you know self-defense or something obviously not it's just a horrible choice but they're a ton of fun and there's no doubt about that so before we wrap this up i want to thank you guys for hanging in there with me over these last couple weeks like i said i was super sick and um, all the support you guys showed me on the last video and stuff i really appreciate it so thank you all for that and i look forward to being back to our regular upload schedule uh, of once or twice a week and I can't wait to come out here and continue making some videos. I did miss it and I missed you guys. Hopefully you missed me a little bit too, but I look forward to getting back into the swing of things. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.